and Dawn. Hi again. <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you guys know, Dawn is one of my nearest and dearest friends. I've lived in the Las Vegas Henderson area for uh, two and a half years now, I believe. And um, Dawn was one of my first real friends here. And I'm not sure if you realize there is quite the difference in our age here. Um, I'll well, be 35 on August 4th. And I'm 17, so she's like twice my age. <laughs> Dawn, will you share your age on, on oh, camera here? Oh, God, I'm 66. 66, so I'm, I'm not good double. at math, so really, yeah. Well, that's 31 years. So, yeah, I mean, there's 30 years difference between us, but we are, like, such good friends, and it's it's kind of incredible. We don't even really see the age difference at all. Like, I know I don't, um, which got me thinking about um, our spouses. We are both married, and I am 13 younger, y years younger than my husband, and you are... 15 years older. Than your wife yeah. so we're about the same and it's the same male female difference and I know like we get there's like eye rollers on this whole thing like people who you know the older guy and the younger girl well I know for a fact for me it's it's not like that like there might have been some kind of attraction there at the beginning that had to do with the age difference or you know me being the the younger one and uh, but that, that issue. <laughs> that's what my mom said like right off the bat she's like oh you found your dad I'm like, mom, no. But we are both really deeply, incredibly in love with our spouses, and we are lucky to have them, um, obviously. We, I don't think we'd be married if... We're pretty true, real per people. Like, we wouldn't be married to our spouses if we weren't madly in love. So, um, I love my wife. Yes, I love my husband. So, and we're, I'm super lucky. I'll just say that right off the bat. And we'll touch on that in just a second. But So this today I want to talk about, um, and I want to get Don's perspective on... Um, loving, I guess, loving a spouse and the love we have for our spouse um, or significant other. It doesn't have to be a, a marriage thing, um, any significant other, but the romantic type of love and I guess maybe expectations and needs or expectations versus needs. And we've kind of touched on this before, Don. So what, what are things that are popping up in your heart right now on this topic? Well, the word expectation is a killer. It's it's deadly, you know. And I love my wife. We come from two different, complete backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I expect things from her. Right. And in her infinite wisdom, or not, <laughs> um, her expect it, it never really happens. I mean, it, it's just weird. It's teach me not to expect. And every time I get into a place of expectations. I would say she falls short, but in a way, she's the perfect mate for me because she's teaching me right. not to expect anything, to live in the moment, right. to be present. Expectation has to do with future. So, and I love that you just said the word future because um, my one of my all-time favorite quotes, and I use it as often as I possibly can, um, is expectation, um, resentment is, expectation is future resent. That's well. Something that's not the quote. That what you said makes perfect sense. Expectation yeah. is. Yeah, and I surprise myself. I get caught up in it all the time. Right. You know, and it's like, oh my god. And then, then I'll talk to myself like, okay, stop it, stop it. Why would you expect anything? The fact she did it for the past six weeks. Right. Why would I expect it on the seventh week? Right. And you know? it is just it, you're 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 preparing yourself for resenting if you have an expectation. I mean, I don't know what the like math is here, but the chances of your expectation being met to the way you've envisioned it and all of that is so low. So your and, and, and a resentment means that you're just going to end up holding a grudge against that person that you had an expectation for. And so what, what I take from this is living in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and it's an expectation is in the future. Right. So if you could, well, I, I, you know, it's like I always talk about uh, sex and orgasms. I mean, the reason why people like orgasms is because those few seconds, however long it takes, you're totally in the moment. Right. Well, you, you could be with your partner, you could be thinking, oh, I wonder if this feels good, I wonder if he likes this, or, you know, and then all of a sudden, boom, the orgasm takes place, and then after you go, oh, that was great. Yeah, and in that moment, it, nothing else matters. So all those things you were worrying about, like, does is my belly too big in this, like, I mean, am I, does he think I look sexy right now? Exactly. Like, none of that matters in that moment of orgasm. And it people who play sports, people play musical instruments, 
you know, like they say, they're in the zone. Mm -hmm. They're living in orgasm in those moments. Right. Oh, yeah. The you know, adrenaline. Yeah. So how do we stay there? Mm -hmm. How do we stay there? And the way to stay there is to be in the moment. It sounds easy, but it's not easy. And a lot of times, just breathing. Like when I do my meditations, a lot of people are like, you know, blissing out, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like because all they're thinking about is their breath. Right now. And it's, the, yeah, it's the right now. Yeah. So... The, yeah, no, that's great. And so, so it was, I said expectations and needs. So, so yeah, kind of back to like the spe specificness of a significant other. And so with the expectations, well, we just covered that. But so in our needs, and I, I'm trying to think of some things like with my husband and I, where um, you know, if my needs aren't being met, you know, is that my fault? Is that his fault? And I think, I mean, obviously that just kind of goes back to expectations. I mean, there is sort of a standard, you know, it's a very, it's relative, but a standard amount or a, a standard list or grouping of needs that um, spouses and significant others, you know, need to be aware of. And when those things aren't met, those standard things aren't met, then, then yeah, like anybody will be... We'll have the... Well, I, I kind of set priorities, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm a lover, I, I really like giving to my wife, but right. if anything, I have to learn from this, it's like, I tell her all the time, give to yourself first, right. and me second. Right. A lot of times I give to her first, and right. me second. So it's like... My husband reminds me of that too. Yeah, so it's about, you know, loving yourself, it's always about loving yourself, when we talk about yeah. infants, it's the same thing, it's like... How can you love yourself? How can you be true to yourself? And we look for our spouse, like my, I mean, God, we're so opposite in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because I can learn more from her because I see things in her that would irritate me, right. realizing that's me. It's right. all about me. And it's not selfish. It's about if yeah. you're happy here, everything else is happy. Whereas a lot of times I still do this. It's like, I want everything around me to be happy so I could be happy. Like, right. How crazy is that? Okay, so that just made me remember um, the day before yesterday, Dawn, when you and I met and we were getting this whole um, idea going and we you know, figured out our set and everything like that. We had an incredible day. We had an incredible couple hours together. Uh, we did a meditation together, which was off the charts, and I just had an amazing day. We, I met with um, a, a mutual friend of ours about a, another business idea. And it was just a really fulfilling day. And when my husband came home, you know, he had kind of a stressful day at work. And I was just on a high, you know, just a complete life high, feeling good about myself, feeling good about my day's work. Um, and I had so much to tell my husband. And even though he was kind of, you know, grumpy, I didn't, it didn't bother me. Whereas in the past, if he comes home and he's, you know, moping around and doesn't seem excited to see me, I'm like, why aren't you excited to see me? And you spend all day at work, it seems like you're probably happier there. Like, you should be so excited to see me. And, you know, and then I just kind of ruined the whole mood of the night. Well, when I was taking care of myself and fulfilling my own needs and with work and energy and, you know, meditation and even if it's physical activity, like anything that you can do to fill your own needs, um, yeah, it's... and it goes right back, the other person that you were would be expecting him to fulfill your needs. Right. So you fulfilled your needs and you have so much more to give to him and you appreciate him much more. Yeah, and I did give him much more. I think, well I think. Said, <laughs> Thank you. I think he was much happier that night than previous evening. So, um, well, I think that's a pretty good place to touch and maybe uh, touch on this and stop on this. I mean, we'll obviously, since we are the loving spouses that we are, we'll come back to this topic many times because um, life situations happen and we might want to share it so um, so if you have any questions or comments or whatever comment below check out our Facebook page and on our website uh, loving heart talks there's a links to our individual websites and um, yeah they am so grateful you guys are watching this like keep coming back and I hope that you get a little something every time um, we share a podcast with you so Another great thanks job. Don love Thank you, you. Love bye you. guys bye.